Luke chapter 2 will be the scripture today. In fact, all this month I'll be preaching from the second chapter of Luke. Today is verses 8 through 10. this message, and I'm not going to give you this message for another time. Some of you have heard on this before. But three different times in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus refers to hell, the place of hell, the place of torment, the place of judgment, the eternal place. He refers to that place as the outer darkness. Matthew 8, 12, 22, 13, and 25, 30. He calls it the outer darkness. I mean, you can speak of fire and brimstone, sulfur and smoke and all of that, and that's all true. You can find those things. But for me, I really think the worst description of hell is absolute absence of light. Outer darkness, loneliness. But there's a sense in which that darkness is a part of the earth also. It's a part of our life even now, every day, darkness. And Matthew, in his fourth chapter, quotes Isaiah the prophet who lived some 800 years before Christ, who said that there was a great darkness over all of the earth and a light has dawned. And Matthew is referring to the birth of Jesus Christ, the babe that was born in the manger in Bethlehem. And Matthew is saying this is the light that will shine in the great darkness of the earth. And that is our light that is shining upon our darkness. If there is darkness in your life and in my life, and indeed there is sometimes places of darkness, but if you feel so dark, please know that the coming of Christ into this world, God becoming a flesh, living among us is the light that comes into the darkness. <clears throat> Luke chapter 2, verse 8 and following. And in the same region, the region of Bethlehem, in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. This was a revelation of God to mankind. And what's interesting is this revelation did not come to a priest in a temple. <laughs> this revelation did not come to a king in his palace. <clears throat> this revelation came to ordinary men. And these were men that many people considered in that day rather disreputable. We shepherds, they were not the sweet little shepherds that we see in our Christmas cards today. But shepherds in that day were considered a rather unsavory lot of rough and rugged outdoor type men. That They weren't always very comfortable. Some of them were like thieves and they were just riffraff and they were just here and there, ruthless. They didn't have houses or homes. They just lived out in the woods and lived out in the fields and 
They weren't the kind of people you would really have home for dinner. And yet God's revelation is coming to ordinary men who are considered very disreputable. And these were men who didn't expect it. They weren't looking for it. Just all of a sudden, the revelation of God comes, just like it did in your life and mine, when I was disreputable, when I was not a very nice person, when I was not a very high actual on a society, when people were just as soon see me leave as come. And yet God came to me one day, and it came home to me that God loved me and he had come for me and said his son to die for me and had forgiven me and it was something I did not even expect. Startling. Astounding. That God loves you that much. That in spite of you, in spite of me, he brings his revelation of his love and it comes to you. This is a revelation that only, only came to ordinary men, but it was a revelation of God that overwhelmed the darkness. Darkness. It comes upon your life and mine. And when that revelation came to them, what does the Bible say they felt? Fear. Fear. Terrified. Frightened. These are hard. Early men. These are men who are outdoorsmen, rough and tough men. And yet, when the revelation of God came to them, they shrank back. They hid themselves, hid their eyes. They couldn't hardly stand it. They were terrified and filled with fear. When God's revelation comes to you, and when you realize and you are first shown that God loves you, and that your life can be changed, you are given. Fear by Satan. Fear is the tool of Satan. He wants to use your fear to keep you from coming to God. You're not seeking God, but God is seeking you. You're not coming to God, but he's coming to you. And he shows you his love, and it's so overwhelming. And the first thing, you wonder, will the church accept me? Am I good enough? Can I outlast Sin and the devil, can I be successful? I'm so afraid I will fail. I'm so afraid I won't amount to much. I'm so afraid that my life will change. Things in my life are going to have to be done away with. New things are going to come in. And it just fills me with a sense of fear. And I don't understand it. Let me ask you this. When you first came to know what God in Christ was doing for you, did you really understand it? I didn't. Do you think on the Damascus Road when the Apostle Paul, who was then named Saul of Tarsus, when he had a revelation of God's light that came to him, the brilliant light that blinded him, he fell down. Do you think he really understood what was going on? I don't think so. I didn't understand what was going on when Christ came into my life. You're not going to understand all of it, but you don't have to understand it to accept it. You don't have to understand everything about what God does for you in Christ to accept it. Just receive it. And the understanding will grow as the years go by. You will learn and you will grow. And when you are maturing the faith, you will look back and say, how could I have not understood that? Sometimes we expect too much of people when they first came to Christ. We think they're going to automatically be Christian. They're going to automatically be the way they ought to be. Their sin's going to be gone and they're going to start living for God. It doesn't work that way. It takes a lifetime to become the person that God wants you to be what God wants me to be. So even though this revelation will come to you, the ordinary, even though this revelation will come and take away all of your darkness, it is a revelation 
information that is not just given to you to hide it and keep it. We can't covet it. We can't hoard this truth. He gives you his revelation that in Jesus Christ is God in the flesh who comes to die and to rise again and to restore your life. This revelation gives you a great joy, but it's not just to make you happy. It's a joy that is given to you to be shared with other people. You're not meant to walk his light in yourself. You are meant to share his light with others. It was an ancient Chinese proverb. It's quoted by Eleanor Roosevelt. It was quoted by John Kennedy. It's been quoted by many people. That it's better to light a candle curse the darkness. And all about us and in this world there is much darkness and I'm gloom and doom and I can get down on it and I can rip and rare and I can be angry and I can be negative or I can light a candle and the darkness will go away. Did you know that darkness cannot put out a candle? But did you know that one little tiny spark can put out the darkness? I close with this story. A young boy was with his parents and they were visiting in Europe and they were visiting the, the, the show places of Europe and they were visiting a cathedral. Cathedral, beautiful, large church cathedral. Centuries old. But they happened to get there late in the day. And it was growing dark. And the keeper of the cathedral came to the parents and said, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave. The tour is over. We're about to close the doors. It's about nighttime. And it was night outside. They went home and came back the next morning. And after that journey, that tour of the cathedral, they went back to their hotel room and the parents would say, oh, what'd you think of it, son? What did you think of it? <gasps> he said, I never saw anything like that. The cathedral windows were stained glass. And they had beautiful images of biblical characters, Bible stories in stained glass. And he said, well, what do you think of the windows? The little boy said, oh, they were the most beautiful thing I ever saw. And why were they so beautiful? What is so great about that? He said, didn't you see them the night before? No, they were all dark. But today, come on, the light was shining through. Oh, may your life and my life, sad as it is sometimes in the darkness, may your life let the shining light come through you. A great light has shown. It has come to ordinary folks like us just ordinary folks. And it will overcome the darkness all around us when you and I let the light come through us. How? By loving people, being kind to people, being Christian.